All right, that looks pretty good. So we might get uh, started. My name's Ben. I'm a teaching and research support librarian, uh, mostly based here at uh, Orc Moody Library on the Callahan campus. And today we're going to talk about all the, the, all the things that you need to know um, about using the library and the library spaces and uh, finding resources. So I'd just like to start with an acknowledgement of country. So the University of Newcastle acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands within our footprint areas. So we at Callahan are based on uh, a Wobbicle country, uh, but we also have presences on um, Dakinjum, Virapai, Waramai, Wanarua, and Eora nations. We pay our respect to the wisdom of our elders past, present and emerging. So the university library has many locations um, and those main locations are Orc Moody Library here at Callahan. We have a presence in a new space. Um, there's a library down at Arimba. Uh, we have a presence in the Gosford Hospital and in the Sydney CBD. Um, hours for the libraries varies throughout the semester. So in the summer hours or um, mid-semester break, public holidays, those hours can change. And we recommend uh, uh, looking at the website. We always have the uh, opening hours on, on the website. At Rock Moody Library and Arimba, we have 24 hour spaces. So if you have your student card, which is your library card and your swipe access to the library, you can swipe yourself in after library hours. Um, and in those spaces, we have hot and cold water facilities, microwaves, PCs, printing, um, and they are quite popular. So uh, we recommend getting in early and getting a getting a spot if you want to study all night long. So here we have um, the Newcastle City Campus Library, which is in new space on level one, I think. Um, so this library holds predominantly the business, law, creative industries collections. And um, it's a good opportunity to remind you that uh, if the city location is more convenient for you, you can have books sent there um, to pick up and likewise at any library location. So you can uh, request to pick up anywhere. Uh, last year we launched Pare Yayiri, which is a collaborative space between Wallatuka and the University Library for Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander students. Um, this is a safe cultural space and uh, we hold drop-in sessions for those students on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, we're yet to confirm the times, but um, definitely keep an eye out for, for those drop-in sessions. The library also holds uh, special collections. So that's the university archives, essentially. Um, the rare book collection and uh, the Glenex lab. And these spaces are, are available for students, but you do have to book an appointment. And uh, Zoe will uh, talk about that. My colleague Zoe will talk about that later on in the webinar. Um, so special collections really covers archives, rare books, maps, objects, other materials. And the Glemex lab um, really covers 3D scanning, microfilm reading, readers, and uh, digitization equipment, which is available to all students, no matter the discipline. And uh, it's a really good resource that um, you can apply to any kind of field of study, really. So, I do recommend booking an appointment and getting in and having a 
having a play and a look around special collections. Other library is much more than just a place for books. So we do have a micro studio here at Ball Community Library. Uh, so in here we have soundproof walls, uh, video equipment, uh, LED light pads, a green screen. Um, so again, you can book this space on the, the website and so it will show us how to do that later on. Um, so you can make uh, multimedia content for your courses or, or even for fun. Uh, Makerspace is another great resource. At the moment, Makerspace is located at Arimba, um, but this year Makerspace will be on tour and it will tour to the uh, Callahan campus and City campus, I believe. And Makerspace is a great opportunity to um, chill out and uh, kind of reset your brain when you're studying or even if you're just feeling a bit creative, you can go in and use the equipment in here. So there are 3D printers, scanners, um, lots of uh, embroidery, sewing machines, electronics. I know a lot of people in medicine use the makerspace to make 3D um, copies of organs. Um, and yeah, so I would highly recommend uh, using makerspace or keeping an eye out when it comes to a location near you. And like I said, uh, the libraries at the university are more than just um, places that hold books. So we do have reflection rooms at all locations. Uh, we have bookable group study rooms, which you can book on the website. Um, if you have uh, children, we do have carer and kids rooms available, which have PCs, um, children's books, toys, play activities to keep them entertained while you're studying. Um, and we do have parent rooms as well. So um, microwaves, fridge, baby change tables. Um, and most locations have a, a cafe. So 2022 is a year of change for uh, the university library. So we are rethinking a lot of our spaces. Um, I know the flowers room here at Orca Media Library has just had a new refit. So they've um, completely changed the layout and the look of that space. Um, and there are new things coming all the time. So to keep track of that, I, um, if you have Twitter or Instagram, please follow us. Um, all those updates are also on the library uh, website as well. Um, so yeah, come in and uh, explore the spaces um, and find all the, all the great resources that um, can help you with your studies. Um, now I'm gonna hand over to Gemma to talk about library search. Wonderful. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Ben said, my name is Gemma. I'm one of the librarians at Arimba campus on the Central Coast. So I assist students um, from Pathways, so Open Foundation and Newstep, all the way through undergraduate to postgraduate by coursework. Um, so um, I'm just going to share my screen with you. And we'll talk a little bit about how to use the library catalogue library search. All right, can everybody see the library website? Yep, wonderful, thank you. Okay, so the library website is newcastle.edu.au forward slash library. That's our URL. And there's a little blue menu up in the top right hand corner, no matter what page of the uni website you're on, with a little three lines, we call that the hamburger menu. So if you just click on that, you'll be able to have a quick link to the library page wherever you are on the website. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit past our welcome banner. And this blue box here is called library search. So this is where you click in and search 
to find all of the resources that we have at the university library. So we have many different kinds of resources, um, books, journals, articles, um, both print and online. And there are a few different ways that you can approach your search. So you can just put in one keyword or search for an author's name if you're looking for a specific author, even search for a title of a book, for example, if you know the title of what you're looking for. Um, but there are some other more complex ways that you can search as well. So I'm just going to show you um, some search tips before we go into a more in-depth demonstration. So on this search tips page, it gives you a bit of an overview of some of the techniques that you can use to search the library more efficiently. So one of the best ways to search if you are looking for a concept, which is a phrase, so more than one keyword that you want to keep together in the order that you've typed them, just to keep all of that information in context. So for example, if you have a phrase like social media, if you put that phrase in quotation marks, it means that it will search for those words together rather than individually. So you'll get results which have the phrase social media within that resource rather than results which just have the word social by itself or the word media by itself. The next thing that you really need to pay attention to when you're thinking about what keywords do I want to search in the library catalogue is synonyms. So when you analyse your assignment question and you think, okay, what words am I going to use? Once you've identified the keywords, think about synonyms and related terms and key concepts. So words which have a similar meaning to the keywords in your assignment, because that's going to help you to um, ensure that your search is wide enough that you're not accidentally missing any important information, just because the terminology in your question is slightly different to the words that are used um, in the resources that we have in the library catalogue. Another really useful tip that you can use is wild, wild cards and truncation. Um, so the symbols that are used can vary slightly in different databases, but in the library catalogue, um, we use a question mark symbol to try and find different spellings. So that can be particularly useful if um, you're looking for a word that has an American spelling and an Australian spelling, just to capture results which have both of those alternate spellings. And truncation is a wonderful trick to be able to find variations in the endings of a word. So if you have a word like management or education, what you can do is trim the word down to the root of the word. So if for management, for example, you would cut off at the G, then put a little asterisk symbol, and that's going to search for all of the alternate endings so you don't have to do a separate search for each different variation of that word. Once you've kind of thought about all of that, the keywords and some of the shortcuts that you might want to use with your searching, you need to think about how you're going to combine your keywords if you want to use more than one. And the way that we do that um, when searching the library catalogue is using Boolean operators. So there's three Boolean operators and they all have a different function when you're searching. So the Boolean operators are AND. And if we have a look at um, these Venn diagrams here, you can get an idea of how they actually operate. The Boolean operator AND is going to link your keywords together and narrow down your search. So if you're searching, for example, for the keywords peanut butter, and Vegemite, if you link them together with the Boolean operator and, you're only going to get that narrowed down sweet spot, which has results which mention both of them. So it's cutting out the results which only mention one of those keywords. The Boolean operator or will broaden your search. So that can be a good idea to start with if you want to search for a bunch of synonyms and link them with or because you're not quite sure what's out there and what keyword um, is going to bring you the most results for that um, particular topic that you're searching for. 
And the other option that you have is to use not. So that's going to exclude um, some keywords. So that can be useful sometimes if you are doing a search and you notice a keyword keeps coming up in the results that you're seeing, but it's irrelevant to your topic and you want to make sure that you get rid of it. Um, so for example, if you're looking for information about orange the colour, but you keep ending, keep getting um, information about the fruit, you could say orange colour, not fruit, for example. But keep in mind that not can potentially get rid of results which could be useful because it's getting rid of the stuff which mentions both of your keywords. So use not with caution. Um, I'd say a good place to start is to probably use and to start with until you start to get used to um, your searches. And then you can think about maybe trying some of the more complex operators. So uh, we'll go back to the library homepage now and just do a quick couple of demonstration searches so I can show you what to expect when you start to search the library catalogue. So today I'm going to search for the keyword penguins and see what we get coming up. So I'm in the all tab now. You'll see there are a few different tabs up the top. So you can limit straight away to a specific kind of resource like books or articles or journals. Keep in mind that the articles tab will cover not just journal articles, but also other kinds of articles like newspaper and magazine articles as well. So if you're just after journal articles, you will have to do an additional limit once you get into the main part of your search. But we will run that search now and see what we get coming up. So you can see here that we have 752,407 results, which is way more than we could ever go through individually. Um, so some of the ways that I could narrow this search down would be by adding more keywords to my search and being more specific about what exactly it is about penguins that I want to know. And I can also use some of these limits or filters on the left-hand side of my search results page to narrow down to a specific research type or really drill down into a topic um, or a specific date range, etc. So, for example, if I want to have a look at ebooks um, and I don't have time to go into the library and have a look at the print books that are about penguins in the collection, I can click on this limit here and click on ebook full text online. And when that applies that limit, our results go down to 980. So it's only limiting to the resource type ebooks where we have access to the entire book online. You can also narrow down further by publication date. So we have these set date ranges here, or you can type in a specific one of your own, but I'm just going to use a preset limit here and click on five years. Now, every time I add a different limit to my search, you'll see that the number of results that we have goes down. And the limits that I've actually selected are summarized up the top here. So if at any point I make a mistake and I want to start again with my search, I can just click clear all to remove those limits from the search. Now you can see here what kind of resource they are on the record itself. So here it says ebook and full text online. And if there are more access options, it will also show you as well. But in this case, we're just looking at the full text of the ebooks. If I wanted to read one of these, what I would need to do is to click on a title. And that will take me through to the website that's actually hosting this ebook. And I've got all of the information here that I need in order to reference the book. 
and I can also click through and download the book as well. So it's important to keep in mind that different publishers um, will enable you different levels of access. You can usually read the entire ebook online, um, but often they will have different download limits and different printing limits depending on um, the licensing arrangements that we have with them and copyright restrictions as well. Um, so just be wary of that. Um, yeah, it's never going to let you print the entire thing. Um, but keep in mind, you will always have access to um, the online copy as well. If we go back um, to our search, you can see here that a lot of these results are sort of out of context to what I'm, I'm looking at. There are a lot of results that are talking about the publishing house penguin. So if I want, what I can do is limit by discipline down here. So if we scroll through here, we can see some of the different um, topics that we have here. I might want to focus on the zoology discipline, for example. So talking about penguins as animals rather than the publishing house penguin. And then you can see that's immediately changed um, the focus of our search. So it's bringing up articles which have um, zoology as um, a topic tagged within them. So sensory ecology of birds, conservation, et cetera. Now I'm going to clear that search and start again because just doing the search penguins alone doesn't give me enough information. I want to really narrow down on a topic. So I'm going to do fairy penguins and searching that as a phrase because I want to look about information for a specific type of penguin. I'm linking it together with ant and I'm going to search for habitat. And I'm going to do some truncation as well. So it's only going to bring up results which has the phrase fairy penguins and talks about the habitat. And I'm adding in Australia and truncating it um, just so we've got that geographic limit as well. And it's going to get all of the different endings of Australia too. So I'll run that search and see what we get. So 325 results straight away is very good um, compared to 700 odd thousand. Um, so I can tell that that's a good search for the topic that I've done. If you end up getting no results, think about what keywords you're putting in and maybe you've been a little bit too specific and also double check your spelling as well because the catalog's not as intuitive as Google in terms of your spelling. It's not going to pick up um, your spelling mistakes and fix it for you. So um, always double check that if you get no results. It's a bit of a, um, a clue to you that you need to rethink what you're doing. Okay, so we have a number of different source types coming up here. We have journal articles um, coming up up the top. We have newspaper articles um, and there will be book results in here as well. If I scroll down to a book result, Penguins of the World, I can see that it says in library and it's got a number here and a location. So if I click on the title of the record and go in, you can see the information about where the book is. So it's located at Ork Moody Library. The status is in library, so it's available to borrow. And it's got the call number. So that's like a street address. It tells me exactly where on the shelf this book is in order to be able to go into the library and find it. So what I can do is look for the number 598. Once I've found that section, then you're looking for the number after the decimal point. So the section 598.441. And then once I've found all of those books, they're all on the same topic at that Dewey decimal number and they're arranged by the author's surname. So these first four letters of the author's surname, R-E-I-L. So I'd then look for um, that book within that section alphabetically. What you can then do um, is actually request a book. 
Um, so if you click on this tick icon here to request, you can sign in with your student or staff um, library number and your library PIN number. Um, we'll talk a little bit later on um, in this session about how to create your library PIN. Um, and that'll enable you to log in with your library account. And then you can choose your pickup location. So you can choose um, home delivery. So the book is posted to you. Um, and you can also um, get it sent to the library that you go to most often just for convenience. Um, so at the moment, home delivery is still available, but they might, that may change throughout the semester. So we've made that option available um, throughout the pandemic just to make it easier for people to get access to the books that they need without necessarily having to come on campus. Um, Okay, so the other thing that I need to um, talk about just quickly is advanced search. So if we go back to our library um, search, um, you do have the option to do an advanced search. And there are some benefits to that because it prompts you to add in your Boolean. So you can add in more rows and pop in your keywords um, in the different fields. It really lets you narrow down and um, search for a specific field um, when you're doing your keyword searching as well. Um, so you might not want to just do, um, you know, a generic keyword or author or title search. You might be searching for um, the ISBN of a book if you know um, that information, for example. It also lets you add all of the filters on before you actually go into your search. Um, and it helps you to um, do a bit more of a complex search right away. Um, so advanced search is a great option, um, or you might wanna just stick to um, doing your keyword search, but certainly once you start doing very complex searches um, with multiple Boolean operators and multiple um, keyword um, combinations, um, it's definitely a great option for you. So um, I think that's pretty much everything that I had to talk about um, at the moment. I'll stop sharing and hand over to Michael. Thanks, Gemma. Um, yeah, welcome, everyone. I'll just share my screen. And I'm going, uh, first of all, I'm Michael, and I'm a teaching and research support librarian um, based at the City Campus. Um, in Hunter Street and also at Ork Moody on Callahan. And I'm just going to talk to you about the information and some of the resources that are available on our website. So again, I'm just back to the library homepage and I'm just going to scroll around it a bit and point out some of the uh, really useful features. And the first thing I'm going to show you is the getting started section. So just here in the learn menu, we have this get started here link. And it just pulls up a, uh, a few pieces of information that are really useful when you're getting started, you're new to the library. The first thing is the library pin number that we spoke about a little bit earlier, Gemma mentioned. So in here are some instructions about how to create a library pin. And your library pin is a number that's just for the library. So it's different from your student number. You only use it in the library and it will allow you to do things like borrowing books, um, check your library record, um, use the self checkout machines, but you'll also use it for um, looking at online resources sometimes. So when you're looking at resources, resources online, it will usually ask you for your student number and password like you would use to log into my hub or your email address but it will also ask you sometimes for your library pin. So it is a good idea to set up a library pin when you're first starting. Um, so there are instructions here and I'll just duck back to the home page. And when you go to those instructions, what it will show you to do is come to this My Library section uh, underneath Library Search. And My Library is your library account that will keep a record of your borrowing. And you'll come in here and you can create a pin number. So you're creating a number yourself. It's just putting in your student number there, uh, leave this blank and submit it, and then it will um, cue you to create the pin number. So that's where you would do that. 
Um, but as I said, in this getting started section, there are some instructions. So you don't need to remember all of that. Just um, there's a short video in there that will guide you through it. Um, the next section in this getting started um, is the logging onto computers and printing on campus. So this is really a handy thing about coming to the library. You've got all of your printing. You have Wi-Fi access, so you can connect to the Wi-Fi, um, which is really great to do. There are instructions on how to do that here. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to connect to the Wi-Fi at uni, um, you can use these instructions. It's got different instructions for your Mac, um, Android, different um, devices. So you can do that here. And you'll use your um, student number, your, as Ben said earlier, your student card uh, for printing at, at the library. So you can come in and use the printers. Um, there's also lots of PCs available, PCs and Macs in our libraries. So come in and find the devices that will be useful to you um, and definitely get onto the Wi-Fi. That'll be really handy as you're getting around campus. Um, one more thing that I'd like to point out in here is this online and off-campus support. So we have a really great guide in here called Online Resources and Support Guide, which has lots of information about uh, studying online, all of the different tools that are available to help you and different ways of preparing for studying online. So we have information about preparing for uni, how to use Canvas, which if you're not on already, you'll be getting very used to. It's the learning management system that um, I'd say most of your courses will be based on. There are also tools, um, things like um, the Microsoft Suite, Zoom, that are available to you as students that you can download um, and use as students. Also storing information. So OneDrive, you have a cloud-based storage allocated to you as a student. So come in here, find out what's available, what will help you study online. And even if you're on campus as well, all of these tools will be really useful for you during your study. So it's, this is a great place to come and check out what is available and then sort of think about how you'd like to use it and make the most of that for your study. Um, creating documents and presentations, we have a library related module as well that has lots of those really introductory information about getting used to using the library. Yep, so really recommend um, jumping on here. We also have access to LinkedIn Learning and LinkedIn Learning is a suite of instructional videos on lots of different topics. So there's like academic writing and things that will help you with your assignments. There's creative types of things. Um, so any of those skills that you, for yourself or for your study, um, jump on LinkedIn Learning, see if there's some instructional videos or programs um, that you can utilize. Okay, just jump back to the library homepage again. The next thing I'd like to show you is our subject resource guides. So I'm just scrolling down to the access menu here and clicking into subject resource guides. So the subject resource guides are guides that are created by the library. They're based on discipline and they have selected resources that will be helpful for people studying in that specific discipline. So I'm just going to look in the allied health guide. Um, and the first thing that you'll see is a list of resources um, these key resources are mostly databases for searching for journal articles. So as Gemma was showing you before, you can search for information in library search um, and library search will search just about everything that you have access to through the university. You can also go directly into databases though. So they're much more focused um, related to specific disciplines. So in the allied health, we have CINAHL, Complete, Medline, these are all medical databases where you can find um, medical info. And these ones are mostly academic journal articles. So they're a really good place to start your search. And coming to the subject resource guide is a great way of finding 
which databases are specifically recommended for your subject area. And you can see across the top, we have in the allied health one, it's narrowed down to even more narrow fields. So um, looking at diagnosis, you might come to conditions and diseases, or if you're looking at anatomy and physiology, you can have a look at this list as well. And all of the guides are slightly different relating to the, to the field, but you can look through the different discipline specific areas. So all those different allied health fields, look at evidence-based practice. So all these resources that will be really useful through, throughout your whole study at UON are all linked in there in those subject resource guides. There's also books. So things like uh, medical dictionaries will be in the allied health one. And if you were to go to some of the other subjects, so for instance, if you were in the business guide, you might get company data or uh, business statistics, different subject related um, things that are all linked in those guides. So a really great place to start your study and to get to know what's available, um, what resources are available in your subject areas. Sorry, there's a lot of information in quick fire here. I'm going to next go to the referencing guides. So again, this one's in the learn menu on the right-hand side. So the library does support referencing. It's a really important part of academic study, uh, referencing your work. And the library is a place that can support you in doing your referencing. And part of that support is our online referencing style guides. So when you're given an assignment, um, a referencing style will be stipulated by your lecturer, what you, style you need to do your referencing in. And when you get your style, you can come to these guides to look at what it should look like. So one of the most common styles at UON is APA 7th style. So I'll just open that up. And our online guides will look like this. So down here, we have a quick guide and this is actually soon to be replaced by an, an online quick guide. Um, but we have this quick guide that will be show the most uh, common examples. Um, and then we have this full guide, which is um, this APA 7th um, online guide, where the menu is down the left hand side here. So you can go to that quick guide. Um, if the examples that you're after are not included in that, you can come to this full online guide. And the way to use it is just firstly, finding the reference type or the resource type that you have. So if you are looking at a journal article, you would select the article section here. Then you have some more specific details about that. So if it has one author, two authors, more than 21 authors, and you would just click on the appropriate tab. And then with, within each of those tabs, you will get templates. So a template of how the reference that goes into your reference list should be formatted. Some examples of what references in the reference list will look like. And some examples of what the in-text references will look like and how you would do it if there were direct quotations. So you have something to look at and see what each of those steps should, like, should look like when you're doing your referencing. And the idea with these guides is not that you learn the style completely and remember everything, but that you can keep coming back and referring to it. So when you're doing your referencing, you just have the guide open, you can do your checks, make sure that you're getting everything within the style. And obviously, as with all of these things in the library, if there's things that you can't get an answer for on the website in this information, then you can get in touch with us and get that follow-up help as well. So they're the referencing guides. And the last thing that I'll point out is this webinar series. So you've, uh, those in the room at the moment have already registered for a webinar, which is fantastic. Uh, we do have, um, this is the first in a series though. So we do have more webinars coming up this semester. And to look at that schedule, you can see in this library webinars link. So 
up here, you can see the upcoming events. This is today's webinar. Um, the next webinar will be on the 8th of March. It's on finding resources. So that will be really great as you're starting to do those first assessments coming up in semester and you're starting to look for your resources. Um, that will be a great one to attend. And then we have referencing, um, end note. So there's lots of different topics through the semester. You can look at the full schedule in this calendar link here. And we also record these webinars. So all of the webinars that we've recorded in the past are all here. So you can come on, look at the different topics that we've covered in the past. And if there's anything that you're really interested in, you can look at these recorded webinars as well. So we have legal research, evaluating resources, lots on systematic reviews and finding information for health sciences. So there's lots of different topics available there. Okay, I think that's enough information from the library homepage. There's lots of stuff in there. Uh, I will now hand over to Zoe. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe. I am a teaching and research support librarian, and I work across three different campuses. So I'm at Gosford um, Hospital Library. I also work at New Space and at Callahan. And I am going to um, share with you today some information on how to get help um, at the library. So um, if we just go back to the home page, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, and I just scroll down. The first thing I'm going to show you is this Ask the Library. So if you've had a look on our website and you're not sure, um, you know, you're needing help with anything, um, you can contact us through here. So I'll just click through. And there's a few different ways that you can contact us. So you can call us, um, you can send us a question. So that's an email. Um, and there is also a library chat option it has the days and times available here. And that is actually a person. It's not a robot behind there. So if you have a quick question about something, you're struggling to find a resource or any kind of quick question, you can pop that in there um, and they will help you. If um, it's, you know, you're needing more, um, more support and a longer session, you can use um, a book a librarian uh, session we have available. They are a one-on-one -on -one, 25 minute uh, session with a librarian and uh, we can go through anything that you need help with. So if it's your research or referencing or anything along those lines. So I'll just go through to that form and show you. So there's a few options available. Um, we have on-campus ones, which I believe are starting next week and next week or the week after. We have online um, book a librarian options. And this is also where you would come to book an appointment with special collections. So it's all in the same form there. And say, for example, you want to book one online. This is what it looks like. So you just pick the date, pick your time, and it will go through and ask you a few more questions about um, what you're needing help with. So that is that option. Okay, so um, another thing that I wanted to show you that Ben mentioned earlier is the um, booking a the media room or any of our other study spaces. So that is under the access, um, this box here, and it's just book a study space. So if I go through to that one, and then you can choose your location. So if we go to Ocmuti, and it will have all the options under here. So you drop down and there is the media room. But there's also your other options as well. So click on that one and it will bring up the calendar and you just pick the um, time that you would like to book it. So that's that one there. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, show you today, if I go back to the homepage and go back to the Ask the Library um, section here, is we have a, a databases problem form. So if you're having trouble accessing something, it may be um, an IT issue um, that's blocking you from getting in if we do have a subscription. So you can log that um, here and that will go through to our library um, IT digital experience team and they will get back in touch with you and, and look into the issue. And another um, thing I wanted to show you is the suggest a new book or journal. So 
if there's something that um, we don't have that you need um, uh, that, yep, that you would like us to look into, you can um, click on this section here and email us as well with all the information and we will have a look into that and we will let you know whether or not we're able to purchase um, to purchase that book. Um, if you're the book a librarian service that I spoke about earlier is available for undergraduate students and postgraduate by coursework. If you're a postgraduate by uh, research um, PhD student, uh, we have another service available for you, and that is our research liaison librarians. So if I just click on this one over on the left here, that will bring up our research liaison librarian contact details. So they can help with lots of different things which are listed here. So literature searches, systematic reviews, that higher level of research um, that you might need help with. So it's all arranged under college and then school. So you just scroll down and find your area and you can make contact with your um, research liaison librarian and they can book an appointment directly with you um, and give you that ongoing support as well. Okay, almost done. <laughs> it's a lot of information. Back to the home page. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is our um, library blog. So that one is on our welcome banner and the news and events uh, button here. So our library blog, um, is that opening? Oh, yep, there we go. So that will just um, let you know about things that are happening in the library. Um, often a lot of this information will also go onto our social media. So if you do follow us on social media, it should go there too. So if there is issues with a database um, or events on or things like that, it'll all um, be in our blog and probably on our social media as well. So that's a good place to find out some information and we've got the events tab there too. And I think finally, the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to find our um, opening hours. So it's right down the bottom. If we scroll all the way down, it's just this section here. So that one will have all our library hours for all our different areas. And as you can see, we do have a few 24 hour spaces available um, at Arimba and then Ocmudi, and the other times are available here. And we have some available on weekends too. So um, that is, I believe, most of what I was gonna talk about. Um, if there's any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, or I think you, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself, but. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. um, I did uh, pop in the chat. If you do have any questions, pop them in. We're happy to answer them. We can hang around for a few minutes. Um, there was a lot of information. Um, and like I also said in the chat, we will send um, everybody who registered uh, for this webinar a recording or a link to the recording, um, hopefully today, maybe tomorrow. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for coming. Um, if you do have any questions, you can, and you think of them later, just come into the library, ask the staff, we're here to, we're here to help. Looks like we've stunned everybody. So <laughs> we, we might leave it there then. Um, if you do think of anything throughout the day, use the, use the library chat or um, come in and see us. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.